gunmen were throwing grenades into the crowds and executing hostages. What might happen during mass shootings if citizens had guns? That's why I own guns. Many Americans do own guns and protect themselves. But many politicians and the media want more limits. Do you think that reinstating the uh, ban on assault weapons and banning high-capacity magazines would do any good? Yes. And politicians say students don't need to protect themselves. That's why we have call boxes. That's why we have safe zones. That's why we have the whistles. And we must teach kids that even things that look like guns are evil. And he picked up that Pop-Tart, made gun noises, shooting noises, and pointed it at children. I tried to get a license for a real gun. But New York's politicians make that so hard. This is 50 pages. Who understands this? They rejected my application, but they approved his. I have a license to carry in New York. Can you believe that? And he jokes about defending himself. <laughs> but many of you are self-defenseless. That's our show tonight. And now. John Stossel. The mass shootings in San Bernardino and Paris provoke politicians to make all kinds of claims about how they'll keep people safe. Most Democrats want more gun laws. Right after the San Bernardino attack, President Obama spoke about common sense gun safety laws, uh, stronger background checks. But while these quick calls for more gun controls make some people feel good, it's by no means clear that they would make life better. The president made his comments before he even knew how the killers got their weapons. Many criminals break laws already in the books. Then what good will new laws do? And also, let's not forget that guns protect people, too. The San Bernardino shootings were quick. The killers shot and drove off. But many mass shootings go on and on. That's what happened in Paris, in the theater, in restaurants. The shootings went on and on, and the innocent were basically self-defenseless. All were unarmed. Most chose to be. But some were unarmed because the French government makes it so hard to get a gun permit. It's possible. But you have to convince police that you're exposed to exceptional risks of harm. Some parts of America have rules like that. That's why I couldn't get a gun permit. We'll get to that in a moment. Since people in Paris couldn't defend themselves, terrorists were able to kill, reload, and kill again. Had some concertgoers been armed, what might have happened? Jack McCauley, who's Maryland's former director of firearms licensing, says probably fewer people would have been killed because concertgoers might have killed the terrorists. More guns would have meant less killing. But Leah Barrett says that's just not true. More guns do not make people safer. Leah is with New Yorkers against gun violence. So why not? I would think. Well, if you look at our country, John, you know, we are a country of 310 million people. We have almost as many guns. And if guns made you, made you safer, we'd be one of the safest countries in the world, and we're not. The problem is we have too many guns, and they're not regulated properly. They fall into the wrong hands. Who are the wrong hands? Terrorists domestic abusers, uh, violent felons, serious and mental ill, and children. I'm, I'm not sure what regulated properly would mean, but Jack, let me let you respond first. We're talking about more gun laws, more so-called common sense gun laws. I actually hate that, that, that term. Uh, Why? What's wrong with common sense gun laws? Well, it would, sounds really good, doesn't it? It sounds like it's common sense. We should all do that. Well, in reality, some of these laws that we are passing to regulate firearms are actually counterproductive. I was promoted to the rank of captain and I was put into charge of being the commander of the gun licensing division. It was driven down our throat, get guns off the street. We want gun numbers. It didn't matter where we got those guns from. It didn't matter whether it was a nonviolent offender. It didn't matter whether it was a violent offender or someone who was causing harm. We need better enforcement efforts and in Baltimore City right now, 85% of gun offenders are repeat offenders. Why aren't they put in jail? What about Paris? Would Paris have been different if people had been armed? Yeah, more people probably would have died. If you think about the Aurora Theater shooting, that happened. It was a midnight showing of Batman in July, and James Holmes came in and surprised everyone. If people in that theater were packing heat, it was dark, it was confusing, and everyone started shooting, more people, of course, would have died. How do you know? 
Well, um, experts tell us so, and most law enforcement professionals would agree. You they agree? don't want everyone to be in shooting. In Paris? So everyone to be shooting in a dark uh, well, theater. Well, not everyone, but if you're lying there hiding mm. and the guy reloads. It was a dark concert, a and it was very confusing. I think most um, law enforcement people would tell you that well, that's the situation that would let's let this law, law enforcement leave. person <laughs> respond. Maybe not so you. I, I've talked to many, many law enforcement officials. Most of them want... Uh, citizens to be armed. They want them to have the ability to respond and carry. It's completely really? false. Really? Most? Because I hear police mm. saying, don't arm yourselves. No, most law enforcement uh, um, officials that I know of, in fact, the uh, Fraternal Order Police supports uh, the arming of citizens. What's your answer to her That's point about it's dark, file. they're going to shoot the wrong people, they don't know what they're doing? Myself, as a law enforcement officer, I've showed up where there's chaos, there's confusion, but we're not shooting or we're not encountering someone with a gun who's a a law-abiding citizen with a permit holder. If you think, if you think of the, uh, you know, uh, the here in uh, Manhattan, the shooting at the Empire State Building a while back, and, and NYPD officers who were trying to uh, apprehend someone, and bystanders were shot by accident, not seriously. Trained police so officers, even trained officers missed. And so the pro part of the problem is a lot of states, there are six states now that you don't even have to have a permit to carry a concealed weapon. Uh, permitless carry, but let's do let's do with guns what we did with cars. We regulate cars. You have to have you know driver Jack, what's training. Wrong with this? You, you have to have a license. Your mind you have on to this. have registration. You have to have insurance. Let Jack talk. You have to have cl you know good lighting on the highway. I get it. Let Jack belts, talk. Baby, I mean, why not do the same thing for Let guns? Let Jack talk, please. <laughs> right now, in the Maryland State Police, you have a trooper who is assigned to an ATF task force in Baltimore. His number one goal is to get guns. He is running the criminal records of those who have hunting licenses to find convictions that are as much as 20 years old, and that well, takes a SWAT Doesn't team. all this attention reduce crime and well, shootings, well, like listen, she says? But he's going to areas of the state that have no crime, no gun crime. There's only so much time in a day. Why aren't we targeting violent offenders? We have plenty of laws on we the We just book. don't have the, the power laws are enforcement. so confusing in the state of Maryland that mm -hmm. even the experts debate over the gun laws. I used to have my guys that would have to brief me on what the laws mean and what they stood for. Leah, you object to these concealed carry rules. 29 peer-reviewed studies, <clears throat> 18 said the shall issue laws reduce crime. 10 found no difference, one found an increase. Which studies are you quoting? I, I'm not familiar with any of those. Those are not peer-reviewed studies that I'm familiar yeah. with. Well, who, who, who? Is it John Lott? I can't list all 29. I'm sure John Lott is in there. Oh, my dear. Then that completely dis uh, invalidates He wrote a book saying more guns, less crime. Yeah, and, and that his, his research, look, John, has been, has been totally discredited. How? I've heard that oh, lie many, so it's often. It's not a lie. One example. New York, Washington Post. He actually impersonated a student, Mary Rosh, using the first two letters of his four children's name to say what a great professor he is. He, he claims complimented his data. himself he on the Internet, and that's his study being no, discredited? He, he claims his data was lost on his hard drive. We'll go recreate it. He hasn't been able on to. On one of a hundred studies, Where's he lost data? data. On Where's one of a hundred studies he has that he no cites. Data. He cannot back it up. Neither can Gary Kleck. They cannot ba I think back up I you have data. been discredited. No, not at all, John. Look, I, I can actually help educate What you. about this chart, which I, may be a, from his book? John's Hoffman More guns, School less of, of uh, pu Public Health. Daniel Webster, John Lott, let's not talk about him. The guy has good, he's, uh, he's a pseudo-academic. Look at this There's chart. There's no serious academic who takes him you look seriously. At this, <clears throat> look at this chart. I take him very serious. I've read mm -hmm. countless studies. And I found John Lott to be extremely reliable. <laughs> do you that dispute is, that's this? That's laughable. Do you dispute this chart? Since gun ownership has increased, crime has gone down. I, of course I dispute it. It's just, I mean, you dispute that gun ownership is up? Gun ownership is actually down, John. Did you know that more in fewer America, households... In America, gun ownership is fewer, it's way up. No, it isn't. For household, it's down to 32% of American households. The 1970s was over half. What's happening is more American households are buying more guns. They're stockpiling. Okay, so okay? gun sales are up and yes, crime is down. Yes, but gun ownership is not per cap per, so per household. And that's what's important. And the gun industry knows this, which is why they're scared and trying to develop new markets, selling military-purposed assault weapons to civilians. They're trying to... Um, gin up markets among women, among children, among urban populations, because they know that their white male demographic is, is going away. That is Jack, the problem. You get the last word. It's all about money. It's, it's follow the a money. A lot is about money. Follow the money. It's the I'm NRA. I'm following the deaths. The Crime NRA, is it, down. I, I like what that about last suicides? Word. It's this type of paranoia. This Gun type death of, rates are um, increasing in this country. A, a number of studies that are miscalculated, misquoted by, on her own website. 
that are completely inaccurate. Name, name which ones that, are, mis that are wrong. That we are looking at these studies. You Leah, you're them. being rude. Let them I, I'm make sorry, I don't point. think and I am. If you're panicking about this, please tell Is me it? one gun law that you would implement that's going to prevent this type licensing of crime. And licensing and registration. Absolutely not. Leah's upset that so many people can get guns in America, and seven years ago that became even easier when the Supreme Court ruled that individuals have the right to keep and bear arms. Concealed carry is now legal in every state as she referenced, Vermont, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, a couple other places, you don't even need to get a permit. So, since people sometimes threaten me, I wanted to get a carry permit. I assumed I could. But then I tried it here in New York City. They make it very hard. First, you must fill out this 17-page form. The form says I must promise I know the definition of other weapons like switchblade knife, gravity knife, pylum ballistic knife, metal knuckle knife, a kung fu star. I don't want a kung fu star. I just want a gun for safety. New York City demands applicants read and understand all its weapons regulations. This is 50 pages. Who understands this? It took hours and hours to fill out the forms. We had to call the police department six times to clarify what questions meant. Finally, it was done. I have to get this notarized. You go ahead and sign here, and I will uh, fill in the rest. Then you have to go in person to police headquarters. Here, they fingerprinted me asked me to list reasons why I should be allowed to have a gun. And then they charged me a $430 application fee. They said they'd get back to me. That took a long time, months in fact. And then they said I had to return to police headquarters for a second in-person interview. This time they demanded that I prove an accusation against me had been dropped. They said this headline was not enough. I was supposed to produce the original court documents. They also told me I had to document threats against me. Fortunately, I could show them things like this. 52 days later, they sent me a letter rejecting my application for a carry permit. They said I could get a license to keep a gun in my apartment, but I feel safe in my apartment. I want a permit to carry where I might feel threatened. But I was told, you failed to demonstrate a special need. Special need? What about what the Supreme Court said? As Jacob Whitehead posted on Twitter, we shouldn't need a government permit to carry. The Second Amendment guarantees our right. I also like what Mark Roggio wrote us on Facebook. My gun, my life, my choice. But not in New York City where bureaucrats told me you have to show special need. They say that in Washington, D.C. too, where Fox 5 reporter Emily Miller wanted to get a gun. And you did get one finally. Yep, a gun and a permit to carry a gun. But it was rare. Very, very exclusive club. More exclusive than the Senate, actually. 51 of us in D.C. There were threats against you that you wanted a gun? Frankly, wanted a gun because D.C. is not a safe city. And I'm tired of walking down the street being scared. But in order to apply for a gun permit under this new law, it's a year old, you have to have documented specific threats against your life. I applied based on, I had two police reports of threats against me. Um, I don't want to get into specifics about those. But, and then I also said, um, something you're familiar with, is I said ISIS has said we are targeting American journalists. The FBI sent a notice out to all American outlets. So I put both my specific threats and my general threats. I got approved. Chief Lanier personally approves these, every single solitary one. And said to you, we're doing this. Just for the two specific threats of the people who want to kill you, Emily, not for the ISIS threat. Behind the scenes, they told me, look, if you have a specific threat against your life, she is going to grant your permit, she being the chief of police, because if you do get killed, we're in a lot of trouble. You wrote a book about your experience titled? Emily Gets Her Gun. And so Emily got her gun, but I was turned down. A gun license advisor later told me I applied the wrong way. It's easy to get a gun if you use political connections. And he said that's how Howard Stern got a permit, and Robert De Niro, and Donald Trump. In fact, I have a license to carry in New York. Can you believe that? Nobody knows that. But could you imagine with Trump, somebody says, oh, all these big monsters aren't around. He's easy pickings, and then, hmm. Every permitting process is different, obviously, in these states that have these shall issue, with, you know, we maybe issue. D.C. is rare. Um, you know, the chief actually 
personally decides each person. I think the process that you've gone through here in New York is a more political process. Are you famous? Are you well connected? Um, whereas in D.C., it really is. Do you have documents? Better. It's disgusting in both places, it's, it's but better in D.C. At least merit-based, merit in the sense of like we actually have somebody who wants to kill you. Congratulations, you get one of these little cards. Thank you, Emily. Coming up, myths about guns. We know that other countries, in response to one mass shooting, have been able to craft laws that almost eliminate mass shootings. Really? We could almost eliminate mass shootings, says the president, with common sense gun laws. It must be true, because after the shooting in Oregon, he said this. We're the only developed country on earth where this happens. The only country. But that's a myth. The author of Hands Off My Gun says the gun control crowd repeats lots of myths about guns. She's radio host Dana Lash, and she joins us now from Texas. So, what's a myth? Almost every single day I hear some sort of myth that comes from the organized, the professional anti-gun lobby. I mean, for instance, this, what the president just said is that, well, you know, there's no other nation like us, there's no other uh, industrious nation like us that has, you know, mass shootings like this. I mean, don't forget what happened in Norway just a couple of years ago. I mean, that was the single biggest mass shooting in humanity. 69 he, people killed. Exactly. Yet they have massive gun control. In Australia, there still have been mass shootings. And of course, there was a situation at the Lint coffee shop. And and of course, in the UK, they still I'm, had I'm told mass that shootings. Australia, they had a mass shooting. They passed tougher laws. They actually confiscated some people's guns, mm -hmm. and everything's better. And in fact, crime mm. is down in Australia. Well, and it's so interesting that you mention that, John, because the private gun ownership level in Australia is actually back to what it was pre-1996 confiscation levels. That's something that they conveniently omit. And in lots of places where they legalize guns, so they allow concealed carry permits, mm -hmm. crime yes. and gun crime drop. Dramatically. Dramatically they do. I mean, that's called the Florida model. Florida was the first state to implement this, and all the other states were really paying attention to what was, what was happening to Florida's crime rate, because an armed society is a polite society. I mean, you criminals aren't going to pick soft targets. I mean, anyone with common sense knows this. And surveys of prisoners do find that the prisoners say, I'm much more scared of a victim who's packing than I am of the police. Yes, absolutely, because they know if they see an individual who, you know, if they see a woman who is, who is just, you know, out and about and she's armed, they know that that woman's going to fight to defend her life. She's going to protect herself. All right, but people where I live, they have a tough time getting their brain around this. More right. guns? This just accidents. People are going to get drunk and shoot each other. My <laughs> left-wing neighbors are upset about what they call assault weapons now, and the upset yes. people include our next president. Do you think that reinstating the uh, ban on assault weapons and banning high capacity magazines would do any good? Yes, um, I do. I do. Oh, good. You know, my... Uh... <laughs> and they all applaud. And there's this hysteria about assault weapons. Who needs right. an assault weapon to defend themselves? And you say... They can't define what is or is not an assault weapon. It's a made-up unicorn term, John. It's what a meaningless it is. term. You could have an assault knife. It is. Knife. I mean, you can, you can have a semi-automatic firearm, or you can have a select fire capability going fully automatic firearm. I mean, those are your choices. But the problem is, is that you have all of these firearms illiterate people. They think that just because you have a black rifle that has a rail and has a scope on it, has a pistol grip, it makes it shootier. And that, of course, must mean that it's fully automatic. Uh, that's no, that's not the case. These are guns illiterate people. There is semi-auto and there is fully automatic. Those are your choices. You have Fu military Fully automatic firearms. is a machine gun. Yeah, a fully automatic Semi -automatic firearm, means you, you have to keep pulling gun. the trigger. Yeah, fully automatic means you pull the trigger once and it goes until you put you release the trigger. Semi-automatic uh, means with each squeeze of the trigger, you get a bullet for each squeeze. There's this internet meme making fun of this assault weapon fear. Uh, a tail of one rifle shows these two guns, <laughs> A and B. Right. And the second one is what they call an assault rifle and is illegal according to some of the laws because it has a collapsible stock and a pistol grip, but it's the same gun? Yeah. 
their cosmetic features. The assault weapons ban simply stipulated that if you have this rifle uh, and you put three or more cosmetic features on it, it's going to be rendered illegal because it does nothing to actually, it does nothing to change the machinations of the firearm. The firearm still operates the same. It shoots the same. It's still a semi-automatic firearm. But if you add these accessories, somehow it makes it more lethal. It just didn't make sense. I'm told 40% of gun sales are done without a background check. That's false. That was the statistic back in the 90s before the Brady Bill went into, the, went into effect. Now it's about fewer than 5%. It's way fewer than that. But even then, we're putting a lot of faith in a background check system that's incred incredibly fraudulent. Just like the terror watch list, where you had reporter Stephen Hayes, you had Teddy Kennedy, you had John Lewis on that terror watch list. In fact, one of the things when you ever you hear um, either Democrats or you hear anti-gun advocates, whenever they say, well, you know, we were able to stop X amount of criminals from purchasing firearms, there are so many false flags. If your name is too similar, if your name is too long, they count all of them as a whole in their statistics. And so we're relying on a system that's incredibly flawed, and people are talking about expanding an already flawed system. Finally, uh, I'm told if you need defense, call 911. You call that a myth? Calling 911, you have to wait on average, John, 20 minutes. I had an incident where a firearm protected my life. My grandparents called the law, and it was about 45 minutes before the law showed up. They lived in a rural area in Missouri out in the Ozarks. But thankfully, my grandfather was armed. 20 minutes average response time for nine, when you call 911. You are your own first responder. Thank you, Dana Lash. Thank you, John. Next, blacks and guns. Attitudes, they are changing. Anti-gun politicians sometimes say, I'm for the Second Amendment. I would never take away Americans' right to hunt. But the Second Amendment isn't about hunting. The founders added gun rights to the Bill of Rights to make it clear that people have a right to defend themselves from criminals and from the state. The founders wanted to stop future American governments from disarming them like the British government did. And if there's any group in America that should fear oppression by the state, it's blacks. But for years, most blacks supported gun control. Law professor Nick Johnson says this is now changing. In his new book, Negroes and the Gun, he explains how blacks have long had good reason to arm themselves. Reasons like... Starting with Frederick Douglass, responding to the fugitive slave laws, uh, his quip was, uh, a good revolver is the best response to a slave catcher. You get to the end of the 19th century, Ida B. Wells, the Winchester rifle deserves a place of honor in every black home. And what she was talking about were actual averted instances of lynching uh, f by uh, black communities with uh, people armed, sometimes with Winchester, sometimes with other guns. You draw a distinction, private violence versus state violence. Individuals in the civil rights movement were very clear that self-defense was a legitimate action against private violence. Uh, they also... Yeah, the civil rights movement, we think of this non-violent... The nonviolent aspect of the civil rights movement focused on political violence and what Martin Luther King and all of the other luminaries in that process uh, explained was that we are not going to achieve political rights through violence. We're not going to have a revolution. We would not be Against successful. Jim Crow through violence. Correct. But... Violence is fine against the Ku Klux Klan or people physically, private people attacking. Self-defense is a response to an imminent threat, and it, this is a concern that everyone has. So in the next 60 seconds, if something happens to you, the state is simply irrelevant, and our law of self-defense recognizes that you can respond in uh, kind with violence where you're facing imminent threats. And the, the young country passed gun control laws, and they were racist. I mean, Virginia's in 1680. It barred clubs, guns, or swords to both slaves and free blacks. Most of the gun control that we're familiar with was focused on blacks or others who were outsiders, but primarily blacks. And you find this running all the way up through uh, the uh, Jim Crow era, where even Martin Luther King uh, was denied a, a permit to carry a, a pistol in his gun after a bombing at his home because he didn't show, quote, good cause. A law in Georgia said... A slave could have a firearm only when accompanied by a white person 16 years old or older, 
or while defending his crops from birds. State and local governments and sometimes uh, private tyrants who were owners of, of plantations would make as a condition of employment and uh, make as just a condition of living in the area that, uh, this, this uh, requirement that blacks give up any firearms and that they uh, not own firearms. And yet despite this history, blacks have largely been supporters of gun control. Laws. This is certainly true for um, the, the, the black political class. Um, and uh, it is also accurate to say that blacks overwhelmingly support the Democratic Party. But when you look at the polling, blacks now um, by 54% favor concealed carry. And this is a new phenomenon. It's been changing constantly. It has been changing. But there, again, there's always been a difference between the commitment of the black political class to gun control versus the people at the grassroots. The NAACP sued gun makers because they were oversupplying guns to black people. Jesse Jackson was arrested protesting guns. The first black mayor of Atlanta moved to ban the sale and possession of all handguns. In its early stages, the NAACP cut its organizational teeth on defending blacks who were engaged in armed self-defense against mobs and against state violence. And one of the most notable cases is the instance of Dr. Ocean Sweet. Um, he defended his new home against a mob, and uh, the NAACP hired Clarence Darrow uh, to defend him. And once Darrow wrestled the prosecution to, uh, to a mistrial, uh, the Sweets went on a national tour. Uh, they raised lots of money for the NAACP. And that money seeded actually the NAACP legal defense fund. So there was a difference. And then they flipped. And what happened in the 1970s was that the members of that rising political class uh, embraced supply side gun control as the, the solution to these problems in their new domains. And Group think. I think lots of people latched onto it as an easy answer, and it was promised as an easy answer. Uh, what we see today is that the reality is simply different. Thank you, Nick Johnson. Up next, a woman who says owning a gun protected her family, and now she owns several guns. When I ask you on social media, what are your thoughts on gun control? Sonny Hildebrand tweeted, my defense is my responsibility. I will not outsource it to the state. Outsourcing defense to the state. I, I like the way he or she, I can't tell, phrased that. And the police often do say, don't, don't buy a gun, call us. But as Sonny said, then you have to hope the police arrive on time. But if someone threatens you now, what are the odds that the police will get there on time? This is an important issue for women because we men are usually physically stronger. And that's why our previous guest, Dana Lash, got behind this NRA ad called Moms Like Me. If a mom puts a gun to the face of a home invading thug and makes him run for his life, the story gets buried. But if she's unarmed and murdered, the cameras will be at the scene before the police. That's true. The media rarely cover assaults prevented or stopped by a gun. But Christina Ribaldi says it's important that we do report that and preserve that right. Christina, why? More laws and more regulations don't stop someone hell-bent on causing destruction and harm. Every single law that was on the book, my stalker broke. And another law wasn't going to stop him, but a gun did. And let, let's back up there. You were being stalked by someone. You complained about him. You told the police about him. Got a restraining order against him. And he continued to break the law. He continued to go to jail. And every time he got out, he would reoffend. And he had a 10 plus year history of this. And another law, like I said, wasn't going to stop him. But the unmistakable sound of chambering a shotgun round at the door did. That's what stopped him. And then you never heard from him again once he heard that sound. Correct. And he actually did go on to commit more crimes and more peeping Tom but and not stalking at your house. type but not at my house. And before that, you'd put in motion detector lights, raise the height of your gate, put in fences, secured glass. But yes, the only thing that worked yeah, we was a gun. We did everything that we could to make sure that this guy left me alone. And it really was not until he knew that I had a weapon that he stopped stalking me. And he went after other people, but he did not come back after me again. But some moms who are worried about safety want gun control. We're in lockdown. Everybody put everything down and get in your safe place now. 
One group made this ad showing kids hiding under school desks during a mass shooting drill. Lockdown drill complete. Okay, drill's over. Our children are facing it every day. So when are we going to? Take action. Join us. There is this attitude. We've got to do something. Pass a law. If someone has the propensity to break laws, another law is not going to stop them. We have gun-free zones, John. Do, does that stop these people that come in with firearms and are intent on causing harm? Those laws do not stop them. Some politicians say, don't use guns. There are other ways to protect yourself. That's why we have call boxes. That's why we have safe zones. That's why we have the whistles. Because you just don't know who you're going to be shooting at. Call boxes, safe zones, whistles. No, thank you. There was the college also in Colorado that said if, if you're being attacked or raped that you should urinate on yourself or vomit. No, thank you. In the event they, that someone they, that is that trying was, to... That was Colorado State or University of Colorado. They, they really did say that. Urinate yeah, on yourself. Yeah, they really did. That's the... Yeah. They, they believe that that's going to stop someone intent on causing harm. If that person is coming after me, I am not going to entrust my safety on vomiting or urinating on myself. I'm going to have a weapon to protect myself. Gabby Giffords, the congresswoman who was shot at a campaign event, wants more gun control. We don't agree about everything, but we can agree on this. Dangerous people with guns are a threat to women. Your answer to that? Dangerous people with any weapon can be a threat to women. And that's why I believe women should have the right to defend themselves. Let's talk about Carol Bowne in New Jersey. You know, she was stabbed to death by her former boyfriend. He didn't need a gun to kill her. And she was waiting for a permit. She, she was, was trying waiting to get for a gun. the state. The holes that she has to jump through and all the paperwork and she had been waiting and waiting again for her right to defend herself knowing that a violent felon was after her thank you Christina Ribaldi coming up kids getting punished for doing this and for chewing pop tarts into shapes that some ridiculous bureaucrat says looked like a gun it kind of looked like a gun but it wasn't one 11 year old was suspended for just talking about guns. That's next. We want our kids to be safe, but today some school bureaucrats are so freaked out about guns that they impose these insane zero tolerance rules that just punish little kids for doing innocent things. This boy ate a pop tart the wrong way. Well, I just kept on biting it and biting it, tore off the top of it, and it kind of looked like a gun, but it wasn't. He picked up that Pop-Tart, made gun noises, shooting noises, and pointed it at children. Pointed it at children. This reporter's breathless as if the child shot up the school. Red Eye host Tom Shalou keeps an eye on incidents like that. There's hysteria. I'm glad I was not in school, I, that I am not in school today, because the things we did back then. I mean, we actually made, we made real threats. We thought they were funny. We played cops and robbers. Yes. And cowboys and Indians. You definitely can't, can't do that. <laughs> but look, people are doing all they can to create a society that's free from guns and violence. So they make these policies and they follow them blindly and it's not doing anyone any good. In Pennsylvania, a five-year-old girl had a small Hello Kitty gun. Uh, she suggested that she and a classmate could shoot each other with bubbles. She was suspended because the school said she made what they called a terrorist threat. <laughs> I, I wish they had the bubblers that I had when I was a kid. We actually had machine gun bubble blowers. So we could, you know, we could play war and blow bubbles at the same time. They are trying to cover their behind because they don't want to get in trouble with higher authorities. It's all about political correctness. Kids get punished even for playing with toy guns off school property. 
The Virginia Beach City Public School System suspended her 13-year-old son Khalid and his friend Aiden Clark because they were firing this spring-driven airsoft gun on the Caraballos post of private property. Including my son. He's private property to me. I would think so, but the school reached out based on what he was doing off school property. I think part of the problem is the kids don't play dangerous enough games. You know, we had games like bombardment and dodgeball, and so you would pummel each other, and you had kind of violence was a part of childhood. But now, since they removed all violence from childhood, then they have to come down on kids with the toy guns. They suspended this kid for the entire school year. <laughs> well, now he's got plenty of time to do whatever he wants on his private property. And these suspensions are not rare. Look at some of these headlines. The Daily News, first graders, plural, suspended for using fingers as guns, playing cops and robbers. An 11-year-old suspended for merely talking about guns. This cute little boy, a 6-year-old, was suspended for pointing his finger in the shape of a gun. Uh, well, I mean, look at him. He looks kind of dangerous, doesn't he? <laughs> Speaking of dangerous kids, this is my son. Every, we took guns away. My wife took his way as guns, but he would just point or use carrots for guns. My daughter and I were on the playground, and there was another little New York boy on the playground. So they were going bang, 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 bang like this up on the jungle gym. And the New York dad came running over, and he said, no guns. And the boy kind of put his head down. And my daughter walked up to the dad, and she said, it's not real. <laughs> I, I like this parody by the singer Remy uh, of the song Straight Out of Compton. He calls it Straight Out of Homeroom. Rolling into school with a deadly device, and every person in my path better take my advice. Cause if I ever draw my weapon, you'll be praying to Christ. And if you dare to double cross me, son, you're gonna get iced. I'm busting into your crib, got the basement locked. Packing super deadly weapons like a makeshift clock. Got a finger gun. Oh, wait, I got another. Uh, you know, he's parodying it, but it's not far from what you see in hip-hop videos, except they don't, they have actual guns in those videos, they don't have Pop-Tarts. Uh, so I think this was a, a great parody, you know, and... Uh, so I could see people discouraging from, from having real guns in these hip-hop videos, and think it's their right to do that, but it's not a great thing. But it's also why any popular culture that features violence and guns and explosions is so popular, because they've drained all of this excitement out of kids' lives, so they have to find it somewhere, and they're going to turn to their entertainment. Good point, Tom. Thank you very much. Coming up, the real reason we have a Second Amendment. Tyrants and terrorism. Today, lots of people say Americans don't need to bear arms anymore. We don't live in the woods where we must fight off animals. We have the police to protect us from criminals, and no occupying army threatens us in our homes. Here's how Congressman John Lewis put it. The British are not coming. We don't need all these guns to kill people. He went on to say the Russians aren't coming either. He's probably right about that. And if they did come, they'd come with bombs. So what good would our small firearms do? That's why many Americans today, especially around here in New York, where I live, say the Second Amendment is just out of date. But it isn't. Just as the First Amendment applies to modern TV and the Internet, the Second Amendment applies today. What counts is the principle behind it. We Americans have a right to defend ourselves and our families. A personal gun won't hold off a modern army. But you don't have to be equally armed to benefit. The colonists defeated the British, although the Brits were much better armed because the Tories didn't know who among us was armed. They didn't know because there was no registry. No one had to get government's permission to have a gun. The British could never feel safe in oppressing us. Thomas Jefferson wrote then, what country can preserve its liberties if rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of resistance? Let them take arms. I don't plan to shoot oppressive regulators who come to my house, but government will be less likely to go too far if they know some people are armed. Here's another take on that from a more recently elected leader of a government. The most foolish mistake we could possibly make would be to allow the subject races to possess arms. History shows conquerors who have allowed subject races to carry arms prepared their own downfall. That was from Adolf Hitler. He wasn't alone. 
Many oppressors, Stalin, Castro, Pol Pot, Mao, more recently Assad in Syria, disarmed their people. The Syrian resistance is possible only because many Syrians disobeyed. Today, many police departments tell people, look, guns are dangerous, you're not trained, you don't know how to use it, you're going to hurt yourself. If you're threatened, call us. But if someone's attacking me right now, the police probably won't be much help by the time they get here. They could draw a chalk line around my body and maybe later they'll catch my killer. But I'd like to protect myself if I can. And I'm sure many people in Paris and Mali feel that way. I was surprised by what Washington, D.C.'s police chief said about this on 60 Minutes recently, responding to a question about how to respond to a mass shooter. Your options are run, hide, or fight. That's what you tell people they should do? Yes. What we tell them is, is the facts of the matter is, is that most active shooters kill most of their victims in 10 minutes or less. And the best police department in the country is going to be about a five to seven minute response. If you're in a position to try and take the gunman down, to take the gunman out, it's the best option for saving lives before police can get there. And that's, you know, that's kind of counterintuitive to what cops always tell people, right? We always tell people, don't, you know, don't take action, call 911, don't intervene in the robbery. You know, you know We've never told people, take action. It's a different, this is a different scenario. You're telling them that now, though? We are. Though they sure make it tough for people to take action. Because D.C.'s police, as you heard earlier tonight, have only granted 51 gun permits. Politicians talk about allowing guns for hunting. But the right to keep and bear arms is not about letting some people shoot deer. It's about allowing all of us the right to protect ourselves from criminals, and tyrants. That's our show. See you next week.